This is Public Resource. Knowledge remains behind paywalls. Science is behind paywalls too. Just last week, me and my colleagues, we were informed that yet another journal subscription is being dropped from the library because of course of a financial crunch. So the publisher approached us with a raised subscription fee and the institution could, could, could no longer afford it. And so it was dropped. This is not the first time that a journal has been uh, dropped from our subscription, but I'm one of the lucky people because I work for one of the, uh, one of the, one of the leading research organizations in India. God forbid, if you were not formally associated with the university, you know, or a, or a, or a uh, research organization or a repository, or if you were like one of my students who are still working at from home because of the pandemic, then it would have been completely inaccessible. You would have had zero access. 2020 was the year of science, right? But most of it still remains locked behind these expensive publisher paywalls and therefore inaccessible to the people who need it. Publishers don't want readers. They want one, authors like me who are willing to, to give their work for free. Two, universities who have to buy paywalled content. And three, false metrics like citations. Citizens don't want these citations, they want science. So the core point is that access to scientific knowledge remains, in access, remains, remains unavailable to me. Access to, access to scientific knowledge remains unavailable to my students and my colleagues. And that is a huge impediment for research, for, for education, and for text and data mining. That's my issue. Knowledge has been colonized. Publishers are trading it for profit. And these faceless, nameless organizations, they are the new Maxwells. So where does that leave us, the scholars? We are the new indigo farmers. Unless we fight, we will perish.